Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you've got a ZVE-10 or an A6400, a few other models, um, I'm going to show you how you can add basically infinite uh, battery to this and also redundant storage so that you can um, basically use this in a professional atmosphere if you wanted to. I'm sure somebody can do a better job of building out a rig on this, so feel free to take this and run with it. I'd love to see what you guys uh, come up with. A uh, small rig has got all kinds of cool stuff that you can buy for the ZVE-10, but essentially this is a rig um, that will just be using a couple of uh, phone mounts that I had laying around. One of them is uh, the, the type that you, you know, screw in. The other one is using uh, this uh, pressure, but, but essentially it doesn't matter. You can probably use whatever. I've also got a double-sided screw here that I use to screw them together with and a standard ball mount that I used to get into the ZVE-10. So um, the reason that I'm putting this together is I looked high and low and I could not find anywhere that could show me how to add redundant storage for a ZVE-10. I have a wedding that I'm gonna be working on and I really didn't wanna to have to buy a whole new camera just to do it. So as far as I can tell, Monitor Plus talks about this working a little bit. Somebody that I watched had a little aside where they mentioned it, but I haven't seen anybody go through an actual solution for how to do this, especially given that Monitor Plus has some real uh, battery issues. So I'm gonna show you how to uh, do this. Um, so basically, long story short, if you're just looking for the answer, Monitor Plus along with a battery um, will take care of you and get you through. You don't have to even use a battery, but if you don't use the battery, the Monitor Plus uses a ton of uh, battery life, so it'll use up all the batteries that you have really quickly. There are a couple of settings that need to be done here um, in the ZVE-10. I believe they include these in their instructions as well, but just so you know, if you're using the ZVE-10, this is a little bit different in the uh, A6400. I can always help with that if you guys have any questions with it, but. Um, you got to make sure that your send a smartphone is off or else PC remote function won't work. Your PC remote function needs to be on. The PC remote control method needs to say uh, USB. And then I do the USB power supply on. That way you don't run out of batteries when you're trying to use this. Because literally, if you try to use battery plus with a ZVE-10, it'll use about 1% per minute. So that's no bueno. That's not really a great solution. Okay, so at this point, you've just done your basic changes to the ZVE-10 in terms of the uh, the menu stuff that you need to adjust. You have bought, I'll, I'll leave links to all this stuff, but you have bought a uh, ball head. You've got a couple of these guys. I'm gonna leave a link to that. You've got one of these uh, double-sided uh, screws so that you can connect everything together. So we've got that far. And I'll also leave links. This is a really inexpensive um, battery. What's nice about this is that given its texture, it just kind of functions like a grip and almost looks like one. And I think you can get to like two for 20 or $30 on Amazon. Again, I'll leave a link to that below as well. You are going to need a, um, a lightning cable. Like if you're using an iPhone, I assume this will work with Android, but this is specifically for getting to work uh, with an iPhone. So this is just a short uh, lightning cable that I got here. You're going to need a USB-A to USB-C cable, one that will uh, allow you to use it with uh, data. I had like three or four of these that were power only and they would not work. You have to make sure that the cable that you buy will also transmit data. Again, I'll include a link to what you need. And you're also going to use one of these Apple um, camera adapters here. This is a generic one that I had that was about $13, $15, something like that. Again, I will leave a link to this so that you uh, have it. So um, again, I don't know that this is the best thing. I mean, I'm still saving up for a full frame camera myself, but if you're like me and you need to do something professional with a ZVE-10 and it freaks you out, the, the idea that you're only gonna have a single memory card, this is a solution so that you can have a, a backup with it. Um, this is an old iPhone 6 that I had, and uh, I've got a new Apple iPhone 14 Pro Max with 256 gigs worth of storage. I could use that for this, and, uh, and I probably will for my situation, and that'll allow me to back up raw files. Those raw files are about 25 megs a piece, so they're going to use up a lot of space. 
but you could easily fill up 100 gigs doing that for, for a whole wedding. But I'm also showing you if you've got an old phone laying around or you can get one. For one, if you can get an old iPhone with 256 gigs, I've seen some used ones that have little issues with them for $75 to $100. That would be one of the options you have. If you just have an old phone like I did, there's an old iPhone 6 and it's got 16 gigs used and 16 gigs open on it, you could at least back up JPEGs. And if you back up JPEGs with it, you get about five megs a piece. I did the math so you could fit 3000 photos, even if you just got 15 gigs free on an old iPhone like what I have here. Um, so the, the Monitor Plus app is an app that is meant to do all, it does all kinds of cool stuff for Sony cameras. What I'm mostly concerned about using it for is for its ability to save copies of whatever is going to your camera. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. But just so you know, it, it works great as an external monitor too. And then it's got all kinds of fancy functions that, that I don't use that you may find some value in as well. I think especially ones that videographers tend to use. So that may be something that you want to look into as well. Um, this app does cost $20 though. And I looked at every app under the sun. I tried this every way that I could think of and I could not find anything else that would allow me to do what I'm about to show you how to do. So um, this is my old iPhone. I basically just downloaded the Monitor Plus app and I did spend the money to unlock the $20 version, which will give you some of the features that we're uh, gonna talk about today. Um, the first thing with Monitor Plus, see I have my screen locked here, is that when you get into it for the first time, it's gonna give you the ability to lock it into portrait mode. On an iPhone, you need to first do that, tell it to go into portrait mode, and then before you've locked your screen using the iPhone uh, you know, lock orientation function, which if you're not familiar with it is right here, you need to, to get it in the orientation that you want it, which is basically upside down from what it wants to do for landscape. So that's just gonna mean you put it in landscape, you hold it like this and you get it turned around and then you're gonna do this and then you're gonna lock it in landscape. And from here on, it's stuck like this and that's how you want it. So I've got the orientation stuck like this and I'm going to mount this into my setup here. Okay, I now have my iPhone uh, connected in there. I'm gonna use my camera adapter to plug into here. Now I'm going to use what order do you do this in? You go. Yeah. So, so I'm going to use my external battery here to power this device. So now it's powering the phone. But if you remember, I also use the phone. I've got the phone powering the ZVE10 because I had it use USB for power supply as well. So basically, the battery is going to power the phone. The phone is going to power the ZVE10. I'm just gonna mount the uh, the battery below here. Okay. So now that it is mounted here, this is essentially I can just use this like a um, I can use this to hold on to later, basically. So use this like a holder, and now it, it's somewhere that I can hold on to it. So now I've got the the battery is plugged into the the phone, but the um, the phone is not plugged into the camera yet. So now I'm gonna take this, plug it into here, and you'll see on the screen here. So I don't know if you can see, but now the, the camera is showing charging and, uh, and monitor plus is working. And essentially as this works, it will essentially keep the camera and the phone just about charged. The, the phone especially will stay charged. The camera will go down like 1% every 10 minutes or so. So it'll still last a really long time. If you use a newer iPhone, like the iPhone 14 Pro Max, this will actually uh, work for like ever. It, it'll just keep filling it up. The only time that you'll run out of battery is if your actual uh, battery module down here runs out of juice. So it'll basically just, it'll just work, work all day. So as you can see here, oh, I've got myself reflected here. 
So if you can see it, but so now I've got this display down here and I've got this display here. So it's got all kinds of advanced functionalities with zebras and all kinds of stuff that you can do. But again, I'm just primarily concerned about using this as a uh, backup solution, but it is really cool too. You can use it, you can change your shutter speed, your ISO, your white balance, all this stuff here. So it's got all kinds of really cool functionality. But what I mostly use it for is stuff in here where, where is it? Oh, you can change the, the live view settings. Okay, I'm gonna go here and do save to camera roll. Go back, and now, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this, but here. You can see, but now, yes, okay. So now I have the ability to uh, save copies of everything to the iPhone. You can have it either um, set it up where it'll save it as uh, JPEG or RAW files or both, I believe. I forget which one it asks you. But essentially everything you need is in here. It will um, give you all of the options to, I'm trying to find where it is here, picture profile. Yeah, save still images to phone and camera, so that way it'll save to your phone and camera, and then you can tell it whether you want uh, the JPEG or whether you want it to have the, the RAW. So if I've got a phone with a huge amount of storage in it, I tell it that I want the RAW, but in this situation where I only have like 15 gigs free on this, again, at least I've got a backup. So you've got a JPEG backup, they're about five megs a piece, so I can store 3,000 photos this way. I got all day battery with this thing. Now, am I definitely going to use this? I may still end up using a, a full frame camera, but this is a pretty cool little setup. It's not that heavy. All day battery. Backup media for your ZV-E10. Not that expensive. I mean, probably let's tally it up and we'll just uh, call it. So say 10, 20, so we'll call this 35. Um, call these adapters and stuff like another 30. So 65, 85. You know, for about $100 or so, you can add this kind of setup to your ZV-E10 if you want to. And then you don't have to worry about losing all the data if you do um, go out and about with this. And you don't have to worry about changing batteries all the time either. And you get this really cool functionality with a better screen and stuff that you can look at as well. So I spent a lot of time trying to figure this out. I thought it was pretty cool. I don't know if it has value to anybody else, but I wanted to share this with the world in case somebody else is running into the same kind of questions that I do. Again, this works for the ZV-E10. It also works for the A6400. It's a little bit different the way that's set up with the menus, but Monitor Plus does give you instructions for all the different models and how they work. I would recommend not doing the wireless version of this just because it can be a little bit flaky. And this, you know, you do it this way and it just works like a champ. It doesn't have any issues whatsoever and you can just do this all day. Now, occasionally, I will tell you that I've had issues with this not connecting correctly. I'd recommend the first thing that you do is just take, plug this and unplug it. Sometimes that's what you need to do to reset. I've had it where the phone needs to be turned off and back on again. I've also had it where the camera needs to be turned off and back on again. But the important thing is I, I sat, I let this sit here just like this for like eight hours and it never had a single issue with it. So as long as, once you get this working, I know it's a little janky to connect everything and get it, but like once you're good like this, you could be good all day. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to change anything. You can buy two of these batteries just to make sure that you got plenty. You can just hold it like this and this could just be your solution. So that was pretty cool. I mean, obviously when you turn to the side, you got to be a little bit careful with it, but you can take pictures with the side with this too. It's not really a big deal. You just kind of hold, hold it like this, so. Anyway, I hope this helps somebody. It was going to drive me crazy if I didn't share with it because I, I think this is cool. I wanted to share it with somebody just in case somebody else uh, needed help with this uh, kind of solution. So anyway, I know this isn't what I usually do, but I hope this helps somebody. Hope you guys have a great day. Thanks so much.